Okay guys, so welcome once again. So as the last time, you didn't pay attention and actually we had like some technical issues. So I decided to record this video once again. Tell for you because I think that this is important for you. And I want you to pay attention to the presentation that you actually tried to do it this time. Okay, and take note because there are going to be like some things important that you have to do at the end of this video. Okay, and let's start. What means to be autonomous? Do you remember how this presentation will be presented? First, I want to talk about autonomy in general, like different aspects about it. After that, uh, we're going to talk about an autonomous learner and then some characteristics that probably some of you have, but some of you don't. Okay, so that's the idea. Let's start. What means to be autonomous? And let's, let's start with autonomy. What is the meaning of autonomy? And it is being governed by oneself and it is the contrary of heteronomy. Okay? And it is divided in five different parts. But before that, uh, I'm going to tell you like this story. Okay, remember that this was uh, this story was given by Piaget back in the 30s, 40s. Okay? And it was about two groups of childs and about two types of lies, okay? So the first type of lie, it is the one about a kid that saw a very big dog and then got home and he said that he saw a dog as big as a cow. That is the lie number one. Now the second, the second story, it is about uh, the same guy uh, lied to his mother about a good mark in an English lesson, okay? However, the teacher didn't get, didn't give any type of mark, neither good nor bad. Okay, so the first uh, set of children, the far the younger one from six to ten, they said that the biggest lie was the first one about the cow. Why? Because adults are going to to trust that kind of lie. They're not going to believe it. However, the second kind, the second group of, uh, of children the older ones, from 14 to 16 more or less, uh, they said that the biggest lie was the second one. So that why? Because it was more plausible. Okay? So here we can see, like at the beginning, like younger children are completely heteronomous, right? Like they are governed by someone else. And the older ones, they are more autonomous, like you, okay? You are in a part of your life that you actually are more or less autonomous. However, in some point you're going to to get there and you're not going to go up. Okay? And that is because of society. And we can see some examples here about lying. And we can see that with our government. Okay? A government that is constantly lying about everything. Okay? And they are not autonomous. They are governed by someone else. Just think about our current president. right? Like, do you think that he is he autonomous? or he is being governed by someone else. So, that's it. Now I want to talk about four important parts about autonomy. The third part, self-awareness. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Do you recognize them? What are your motives? Okay. Why do you want to study? Self-regulation. Why do you come to school? What time do you usually get up? That is self-regulation. Okay? Uh, when, you, when you want to, to do the homework, at what time do you do it? When do you prefer to study? That is self-regulation. Or anyway, like you decide if you do a homework or not. Okay? So, it is not only about your behavior. It is also about some other things that you can control. It. And you are the only one in that can take those kind of decisions, okay? And that is self-regulation. Self-confidence, you can do it. And I think that most of you can do it. I love you think that you can do a lot of things, okay? And this is more or less related to that, okay? Like, no matter how difficult a task could be, so you are absolutely sure that you, if you are self-regulated, if you are self-awareness of your, of your weaknesses and have to overcome them, so you can actually, like, achieve your goal. And finally, set directions. So, what are you going? What steps are you going to follow in order to do something? Uh, do 
do you have a clear objective in your life? Keep this in mind because right now you have to choose a career to study and probably you, you, you will have the opportunity to change the career however that is not okay so the, the best decision that you can do right now it is try to be a little bit autonomous decide your career as well as possible and then have a decision about your life keep in mind like keep keep in mind like all these parts of autonomy okay really because you think that you're autonomous right but are you actually got like have you ever thought about everything regarding to autonomy okay now we're going to talk about uh, an autonomous learner because the things right now are going to change for you so far you have been in a classroom and the teacher and uh, the coordinators were the ones that have been taking your learning decisions what topics do you what topic do you want to learn it was mandatory that you assisted to the classes okay but right now you're going to the things are going to change even the teachers are there okay the teachers there uh, they think that you are actually are autonomous enough to study some things by yourself but so far until probably next year okay, at the middle of so next June so you, you have to ask for permission to go to the restroom okay and right now it is supposed that you got the responsibility to learn by yourself so that is going to be tough so I want to give you some advice I want to show you what it means uh, to be an autonomous learner So, you see, the ones who possess the ability to take change, the charge of one's own learning, being active and independent. And that is something that you need to keep this in mind. This is for Dickinson, 1995. Okay. Uh, like, new theories, they always, uh, they always thought that learning is something that can be achieved by yourself. And they are, they are right. Okay. And this, uh, this autonomous learner, this self-direct learning, it is divided into parts. So, self-direct learning, if you want to study a little bit more about this, uh, Belson and Volter, 1997. Your article, okay? So, now you're responsible for your learning. The teacher probably is going just to give you, uh, like, a topic, okay? To introduce it. Now, you have to study. You have to understand the topic and you have to create something and direct your own, of your own learning the steps that I mentioned before okay you need to create your path you need to see how you're going to achieve something but you have to be very very organized you have to choose your information wisely and also you need to ask for help in case that you need it okay now responsibility are you responsible enough with your duties? Because at the university is going to be different. Okay? There are not going to be extensions. The coordinator is not going to be there in order to give you an extend an extension in your in your homework. Okay? The teacher's support. And also here probably we have to mention about your parents' supports and your family supports and everyone that supports your autonomy. Okay? If you want to do something do it but you need to encourage and support the person that are currently trying to do when we were in the classroom uh, I asked if someone was trying to learn another language by um, themselves like three of you raise your hand and, and I asked them if they had their parents support and one of the girls uh, she was from ninth grade I think and she said that she was trying to convince her father to pay to pay for a course in Japanese, I think. No, I don't think it was Japanese, I think it was German. Okay? So you see that? To support. When you want to be autonomous, you're supposed to need a support. In this case, the support of the teacher. Because the teacher is not going to give you everything right now. The teacher is going to help you to organize your objectives, probably. Okay? And to give you material. So you cannot, like, waste your time looking for the right kind of material that you have to study in order to learn something. 
peer support that is uh, from Johnson and Johnson in uh, 2008. That was the last one. Uh, that you actually need your partner to help. Okay, you can you can learn from your partner. You are good students, but also you need to recognize that your partners also know something that probably you don't know. Also, you can ask for feedback. Okay, ask for assessment from your peers. So you can actually like learn a little bit more. This is about uh, when you are autonomous. Doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that you work by yourself. It means that you can look for the right kind of help when it is needed. Availability and flexibility in learning environments. That is Nagin, uh, Little, Magdevich, and Lee, 1998, the 90s. Okay, uh, everything is changing right now. Learning environments are everywhere. What are you going to learn? Okay, the library is an option. The classroom is an option, but we're talking about inside and outside the classroom, okay? If you just think that the learning process is going to be in the classroom when you are in a class, in a lesson, at the university that is not going to be like that, because probably most of your learning is going to be carried out outside the classroom. And that is something that you need to realize, okay? Don't expect everything to happen inside. Uh, also what they try to look for different environments to learn. Look for the best place for you in order to learn. And finally, a teacher, different from this one that is about the support, okay? It is the role of the teacher. So far, the teacher has been like the sage on the stage. Most of the time, like he was the one that had all the knowledge. And the university are going to give the responsibility to you. You are to be the one, you should be the one, okay? to try to get the knowledge. So what is the teacher? The teacher is going to be a manager of the learning program. The teacher is going to give you the objectives, okay? And he's going to assess how you're going in this process step by step. He's going to evaluate you. But he's not going to give you everything. So you need also to learn to plan and ask for help. But not for the teacher. Not like, teacher, I need that, that, that you explain like everything, something that I don't understand. No, it is not like that. It doesn't work to, to work like that. You, uh, you can ask for resources, for more material. And for a time, if you probably you don't understand, not, but not a whole topic, just specific parts, okay? So you can make the most of your learning. So you can learn smarter and faster. As teachers, uh, it can give you knowledge. Let's think about this one that says, you can bring the horse to water, but you cannot make him drink, okay? A teacher can offer all the necessary tools and input, but learning can only occur if learners are willing to get involved and participate. You need to be thirsty of knowledge. You actually need to want to learn. Okay, because the teacher is going to be there, they're going to be the horse, okay? The teacher is going to give you to the water, bring you to the water, and you're going to be the one to take the decision if you're going to drink, if you're going to learn, or not. Obviously, that in the school, as teachers, okay, we, are, we need to present this water, this knowledge, in different, in different ways, in entertaining ways, in funny ways, so you can learn better, but anyway, it is the same action. You drinking water, you the horse. You drinking water. You know what? The, the, the water has knowledge, okay? As this and everything like a learning process. You, as learners, accept responsibility for the learning. I constantly reflect on what they are learning, what they are learning and with what degree of success and their learning is fully integrated with the rest of what they are. This is edge of 2008 and it's about that you are the one to decide. Like keep in mind that here are some important words, okay? Do you, do you have the same responsibility for your learning, okay? It is not supposed that just for being at the university you are going to learn. It is up to you, okay? What are you learning and why? That is why I, I right now tell you that you have to be very careful 
with the career they're going to study, okay? Love what they're going to study. And so you can get a job in what you love. So you don't have to work any day. Now some steps. I'm going to give you like some advices so you can be better at autonomous learning than you actually are. So characteristics. Know your needs. What do you want to study? Okay? But something real and remember to create the steps. Work together with the teacher to achieve goals. Right now at the university you can ask for advice. Remember that it's not about that you're going to ask for everything because you don't understand like, like a simple thing in the classroom. Okay? It is about that you actually are going to work with the teacher. You're a team to get learning. In order to get the learning. Okay? Learning inside and outside the classroom, I was mentioning this, this idea before, because most of the ACE process, learning process at the university is going to carry out outside the classroom. Uh, create your own material, your own learning materials. Uh, last time I asked you about flashcards. So how many of you uh, write draw flashcards when you don't need, when you want to revise something when you need to reinforce a topic? So you can create your own material. Don't expect to find everything online. Okay. Use resources independently, so you can look for different resources and you can use them properly. Like for instance, this one, okay? This is a resource, and I'm using it. I was the one who took the decision to try again, to give you this one through a video, uh, to record something and then to show this link. I was the one to try to give you this kind of knowledge in a different way. Active and critical learning and thinking, this is metacognition. Probably you're going to, to see this one at the university when you learn, when, when you heard the word. So think about me, okay? Metacognition, active and critical learning and thinking. So that is about uh, learning to learn, okay? Thinking about thinking. But anyway, you're going to learn that at the university, okay? So you have to be very critical when you're learning. Uh, in one of my classes, remember that I told you that you don't have to believe like everything that we say just because we are teachers, okay? We can make mistakes and you can correct us and we can learn from you. And we are actually expecting that, okay? Because the learning process is a process that is never ending. Adjust your learning styles. If you are not good working like this, try to do it in a different way. Think about your strengths and weaknesses and try to overcome your weaknesses. Manage and divide your learning time. Okay, so again, like self-regulation. So like distribute your time properly. Don't procrastinate, please. We know that that is a, that is a sickness of this 21st century. So please don't procrastinate. Uh, don't rely on the teacher. Okay, remember that you're a team, but you cannot expect that the teacher to give you everything. Control and supervise your learning, self-assessment, okay? That means that you need to evaluate yourself. Do it, try to create a test, okay? Do it, apply it, and then like, try to see what kind of mistakes did you make there. Try to look for different strategies so you can evaluate that you're actually learning something. Don't just revise as a crumb, read your notes the night before and you think that, okay, that's enough. No, it is not like that. Okay, you can do it with different things, okay, in different ways. Uh, are good guessers. Uh, on Friday, I think that I told you, you don't know, guess, but try to guess in an, uh, in an intelligent way, okay? So, I think that uh, I have already explained this topic about how, how, the, how can you actually guess something properly, okay? Choose material, methods, and tasks. Okay, always change the things. Uh, reflect on what you are doing, uh, how are you learning, what kind of materials are you using in your classes. Or if you can change it, trust me, that is going to change everything. Everything like uh, if you are studying, for instance, just watching videos, and you switch to reading books, and then for another material, so that is going to help you to increase your knowledge, like hugely. Trust me. Like when you only read 
and read and continuously the reading because I, I think that it's actually good, okay? However, and, and then you change for a video, so it's going to change uh, the way you reinforce your knowledge. So anyway, you're going to learn. You're going to learn even more. Okay, because you're changing the things, you're forcing your brain to learn in a different way. So it's going to help you a lot. Take an active approach to the task. Uh, uh, last time I told you about this one, at, about the participation in class. Okay? Most of you just keep quiet and you actually know the answer. You just don't want to know, that you just don't want to participate, you are very shy. What happened? So you have to be very active when it is about learning. So you have to be the one taking the decision and make the most of the different learning environments uh, that will be presented at the university. Make and reject hypotheses, okay? Like, again, like, think just for a moment something is not true. And start working on that, okay? It is not about, about it's about being critical. It's not about criticize everything, okay? So, keep that in mind. Pay attention both form and content, so what is the meaning of something and how it is presented, how it is presented, okay? We need to take risk, as I am trying to record in this video just for you to learn something more about autonomy. So this is a risk, and probably you are not going to watch the video, or, or do you? So are you going to watch one? Let's see what happens. Um, again, like self-assess your work and your performance, okay? With a grid, I don't know. Imagine things. But self-assessment is something important that you need to learn if you want to succeed at college. And everything, like, this is not from me, right? Like, I am not that intelligent, okay? So this one is for H, I think that is 2000. Yeah, H2000. Uh, I think that he gives like more things, he, he talks more about this characteristic about an autonomous uh, learner, so check it out. I don't want you, I don't want that everything just stay here in this video, okay? Just if you go and look for one of these references and read for a while, I think that you can learn even more, okay? So you can be more autonomous. Like all the reference, because this is not from me, okay, like everything that I have said, uh, someone else has said it before, okay, so, so we got a key, uh, what, Johnson & Johnson, Kami, Little, Dickinson, Hedge, I think that that's it. Anyway, I think that if you ask me, I can share this presentation with you, but you have to ask me, okay? The video, it is going to be online, so you can watch it like more than once, but you're not going to do it, okay, anyway, but please, okay, ask me if you want this, this presentation. And uh, that's it, thanks, and now, boys, now that I got your attention, I don't know how long have you been here, probably 20 minutes, so now you're going to fulfill, like, four different tasks, okay, and I will give you a mark for these four different tasks. First, in the comment section, you need to write, first, what do you think that was important here, okay? What do you like? What was important, okay, for you? Something that you didn't know. So, so Something important, something that you didn't know, okay? Something that you want to improve in your life. Keeping in mind this presentation, okay? And number four, okay? Through this video, I think that I have made a couple of mistakes in my English. So, I ask you to look for that kind of, for those mistakes and write them down. Obviously, wait a minute and the second. Please. So, all these four tasks in the comments. And don't forget to write your name there so I can give you those extra points in your, I don't know, in one of the marks that you can ask me, okay? You know that no quizzes, no evaluations. Boys, thank you for your attention.